it's Mrs. Reichelt and this next video we're going to talk about is covers mostly respiratory sounds and how oxygen actually is loaded and unloaded in circulation. So the sounds are monitored with a stethoscope. There are two recognizable sounds that can be heard with a stethoscope. Those are bronchial sounds. These are produced by the air rushing through the trachea and through the bronchi. And then you have vesicular breathing sounds which is, are the soft sounds um, of air filling the alveoli. So if you go into a well check or something, you have your little stethoscope. The doctor has their stethoscope, which looks kind of like this with a little circle on the end. That's the actual stethoscope part. And then that little part is where they go into their ears. They probably put it on the front of your chest as well as the back of your chest. And they're testing for those. So external respiration is where oxygen is loaded into the blood at the alveoli. So the alveoli always have more oxygen than the blood. Oxygen then moves by diffusion towards the area of lower concentration. In this case, the blood will have lower concentration, so the oxygen is going to move there. And then this occurs in the pulmonary capillary um, blood gains oxygen. So the pulmonary capillary blood is what gains the oxygen ultimately from the alveoli. So here's a diagram of kind of what this looks like. So I, I know that we've kind of written it down or, or talked about it a couple of times, but it's always helpful, I think, to do it a couple more. So the oxygen, there's a, going to be a lot of oxygen in here. It's going to then diffuse areas of high to low concentration, so that's diffusion occurring. And then the oxygen is then going to attach to the oxyhemoglobin, which will ultimately be formed. Carbon dioxide is unloaded out of the blood so that means that the blood is re that's returning from the tissues has a higher concentration of carbon dioxide, which I'll draw a couple of those right there. Um, and the same thing is going to happen. Diffusion will occur, which will take those carbon dioxide levels um, from areas of high to low concentration, putting carbon dioxide into the alveoli. Um, the pulmonary capillary blood will give up the carbon dioxide to be exhaled and then blood leaving the lungs is actually oxygen rich and carbon dioxide poor. The oxygen that's transported in the blood is attached to the hemoglobin in the form of oxyhemoglobin. So this is our uh, hemoglobin right here, this HB, and then this is our oxygen and collectively it makes this HBO2 which is oxyhemoglobin. It's a small but dissolved amount which is carried in the plasma too. So you're, you'll have a little bit of oxygen in the plasma but not a whole lot. Most of that oxygenated blood or oxygen is going to be carried on the hemoglobin. The carbon dioxide will be transported back to the alveoli for the most part as bicarbonate. So bicarbonate is HC. O3 negative. So that's basically what it's going to be transported as. And then the small amount is also carried inside the red blood cells on hemoglobin, but they're at different binding sites than the oxygen. So I would probably just worry about for the most part, or carbon dioxide is going to be carried within the plasma as bicarbonate. And then your four carbon dioxide um, molecules are going to diffuse out of the blood into the alveoli. This must be released from its bicarbonate form, so that means that you're going to have to add water to it. That's Plasma is mostly made up of water, so as you get to the alveoli, that bicarbonate will interact with water, go through a chemical reaction, and then it'll turn into um, that carbon dioxide and water. So you have bicarbonate plus um, carbonic acid, which will ultimately form water and carbon dioxide. Once you have the carbon dioxide that's formed, then you can turn that into carbon dioxide to leave through the alveoli. The carbonic acid splits, which forms water and carbon dioxide. And then internal respiration. Internal respiration, again, is that gas exchange that is occurring at the body tissue, so we're not inside the, the alveoli anymore. This is the exchange um, between the blood and the body cells. So it's happening with an opposite reaction of what occurs in the lungs. So the carbon dioxide diffuses out of the tissue, which is called loading. Then oxygen diffuses from the blood 
into the tissue called unloading. So at this point now you have your um, oxyhemoglobin. It will separate out into hemoglobin and oxygen and the oxygen will diffuse. And then the carbon dioxide will do the same thing. It will diffuse. It will combine with water to form carbonic acid and bicarbonate. And then our last slide here is the summary of this. So the major four re events in respiration is pulmonary ventilation. That's just air moving in and out. External um, respiration has to do with the respiration that's occurring at your lungs. Gas transport is the movement. Whoops, I didn't spell that right. Oh, well, the movement of materials um, throughout your circulatory system. And then internal respiration is the uh, gas exchange that's going to occur in your body tissues. So I hope you found that helpful.